For the children of Israel are servants to me. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt, and I am the Lord their God. These words were said in Leviticus 25, depicting and summarizing the story of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. Now recognize, God did not call them simple beings that he had created and had this distant relationship. He had an endeared relationship calling them children. That they are my children, that they are my servants, that I redeem them, that I am their God. How beautiful this is, and moreover, how do we recognize the parallel of the relationship God has called us to be a part of for all human beings. We're called to be in a relationship with Him, living out the purpose of our existence. Today, I'll be expressing the question, what is the essential duty of man? And in today's speech, I hope I clearly portray that man's all is to glorify his master, to glorify his father through love and obedience and an intimate relationship with him. And we'll see this truth expounded on in three different points. First, we're going to see the commonly known definition for this theological term, essential duty. But we're going to see how Scripture says so much more than what is said in these mere definitions. In our second point, Scripture expounds. And lastly, we're going to see what's the significance of this. Why should we care understanding the essential duty of man? So with that, let's begin looking at the first point, the commonly known definition. The first question of the Westminster Catechism is as follows. What is the chief and highest man? Excuse me, what is the chief and highest end of man? Not man, pardon me. The answer is man's chief and highest end is to glorify God and to fully enjoy Him forever. Okay, we understand this. We are called to glorify our God and to enjoy Him. But to me, it lacks. It's just not there. It doesn't describe what glorifying looks like. It doesn't say how we're going to enjoy Him and what that is depicted as. Wayne Grimm, in his book, Systematic Theology, affirms this definition by saying, what is our purpose in life? Our purpose must be to fulfill the reason God created us, to glorify Him. Okay, so essential duty links to our purpose of existence. And again, it goes with the word to glorify. But again, there's so much more. So much more in the relationship with God, which is my next point. Scripture expounds. When we look at Scripture, there's so much more to a relationship with God than simply glorifying Him. And really, that word does not do it justice in what it means to glorify God. Let's take a look at Romans 12.1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You see, the idea of the essential duty is that we are called to live a life of sacrifice. That we are no longer ourselves, but that God indwells with us in an intimate relationship with His Son. Consider Galatians 2.20. It says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. See, the essential duty of man is to forsake himself. To no longer be who he is, but be in Christ. Moreover, in Matthew 20 and 19, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You see, when we say just go glorify God, it sometimes puts a perspective on us, the individual. But yet God calls us to a collective perspective, a looking for the lost sheep of Israel, the lost sheep of the world, the children that are not part of God's family. And truthfully, that's the essential duty of man, is to be a part of God's family. Think about it. God is now not just our creator, but our dear Father to where He tells us, He commands us to call Him Abba, a Hebrew term that really is translated in English, Daddy. That's the essential duty, to be His Son, to obey Him, to love Him, most importantly, to bring the lost children back into His arms. Which brings me to my last point, the significance. Why should we care about the essential duty? Sure, we understand these theological terms, but how does it apply to us? Well, I said, when we just simply say to glorify Him, it seems so much like a doctrine, but not an application. The essential duty of man is an application because it is our reason of existence. It is our reason for living. Consider Solomon. Solomon was a man that pretty much was able to test everything that was considered a purpose in life. He portrayed this in his book of Ecclesiastes. And he opens his book with these words. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. It's grasping for the wind. Without God in the equation of life, man is left to grasp for the wind for all kinds of things that simply are shifting sand. Francis Schaeffer explains this in his book, The God Who's There, by saying, philosophers can't even figure this thing out anymore. They've taken out absolutes and say, well, we'll kind of figure out what's right and wrong, but it's not really absolute, it's kind of relative, and now we're all under what he calls the line of despair. 
You see, no longer is man able to be finding that intimate relationship, finding the truth. But now they're away from God and they're separated from all that is good. For with God is everything good. And when you take God out of the equation, all that is good leaves with him. Rabbi Zechariah says in his book, Jesus Among Other Gods, purpose is to life with the skeleton is to the body. The muscle may have strength, but it needs support and attachment. Truthfully, we're all a whole bunch of blobs of muscle without our God. But in Him, we have attachment, and in Him, we have a reason to move and live within this body. It's for Christ. But bring us all together. Let's take what we talked about today. We first saw the simple definition is to glorify God. That's our essential duty to, of being a man. But moreover, it's expounded on that. It's a family relationship. This is our God. This is our Father. And we are His children. And we saw the significance is that we have purpose. We're not grasping for despair, but we are grasping for our Abba. And I say all this to leave you with this last point. As they open with Leviticus chapter 25, describing the relationship with the children of Israel and God, I hope I show you today that our God is our God. He is our Father. We are His children. And the essential duty is to live out a life that glorifies Him and relationship with Him and bringing other lost children to have that same relationship of love, of obedience, of no longer self, but of God. Thank you. Thank you for judging, sir. Thank you. Thank you for judging, ma'am. Thank you for your time.